The west coast of America continues to experience a crippling drought. This mega drought out west has been going on now for 22 years. If you go back before the drought and where I'm standing right now, I'd be about 40 feet underwater. The norm, like grass, for example, that we take for granted, right? Well, very soon, this could be a thing of the past. Trillions of gallons of water have fallen across the Golden State in the last month alone. Millions of people remain under flood watches, yet much of that water has just returned to the ocean. It took us you know, years to get in a kind of a drought-stricken state. It will take years for us to get out. This drought has been so extreme that Californians now publicly shame each other for using too much water. They're drought shaming the rich and famous for their green lawns. And even almond shaming some farmers, which as someone allergic to almonds, I'm totally on board with. We usually think of drought as a problem of not enough rain, which is often the case, but California's biggest problem isn't rain, it's snow. Half of the state's precipitation falls between December and February and forms a huge snowpack in the Sierra Nevada mountains. This acts as a natural reservoir for the whole state. When the snow melts in the spring and summer, it flows down to tens of millions of people who rely on it for everything from their farming irrigation to their showers to their almond-free margarita Mondays. But over the past several decades, the West's mountain snowpack has been shrinking. 23% has disappeared since 1955. And by the end of the century, it could lose as much as 79%. But climate change isn't just drying up natural reservoirs. It's drying up artificial ones, too. And in the country's two largest reservoirs, Lake Mead and Lake Powell, levels have gotten so low, they're about to reach Deadpool status, which isn't nearly as funny and action-packed as it sounds. Deadpool status occurs when water drops so low that it stops flowing downstream. And that sets off a cascade of problems. Hydroelectric power stations shut down, which increases demand on fossil fuel power stations, which increases greenhouse gas emissions, which, considering the title of the show, like, not ideal. Low water levels also cause big problems for agriculture. California alone accounts for a third of all vegetables grown in the U.S. and two thirds of its fruit and nuts. Without California, we'd basically have, what, the diet of like a Texan, right? Now, if I've done my job correctly, you're probably a little bummed out, right? But stay with me, because even though drought is one of the hardest climate problems to solve, we do have options. First, we could build more reservoirs to capture more water. That wouldn't be easy, but it's a possibility. Another option is to tap more deeply into groundwater. Unfortunately, it's been so overtapped that California's Central Valley is literally sinking. But there's one kind of water the West Coast has always had a lot of, ocean water. California already has some desalinization plants and recently approved a new plant that could convert up to 5 million gallons of seawater each day into drinking water. But building more has been a challenge. Last year, an even larger plant was blocked in the face of local opposition from NIMBOs, not in my back ocean. They're like NIMBYs, but saltier. Instead of finding new water sources, Californians could have more success using the water they already have more efficiently. The state's urban water use has been falling for years thanks to innovations like water-efficient appliances, artificial lawns, and water recycling. But no matter what approach the state takes, it's going to be an uphill battle. The West Coast's entire system to capture, store, and distribute water was built on a different planet, a planet with predictable rainfall and snowpacks. That's not the planet we live on anymore. This drought isn't a temporary emergency. It's a new normal that a big part of this country is gonna have to deal with. Now, one city that's dealing with this new normal fairly effectively is Las Vegas. Vegas depends on the Colorado River Basin for most of its water. And dancing water fountains aside, it's actually one of the most successful cities in America when it comes to water conservation. We went to Nevada to investigate why.